The portrayal of Neanderthals as solitary figures has been deeply entrenched in popular imagination. However, new research highlights their ability to form communities, share resources, and perhaps even build alliances. These insights redefine their place in human history. Neanderthals were neither brutish cavemen nor noble savages. They were complex, intelligent beings who navigated a challenging world in ways that deserve respect and recognition. The hypothesis that Neanderthals survived in southern Iberia until the start of the last glacial maximum 23,000 years ago has intrigued scientists for decades. This idea challenges traditional timelines of Neanderthal extinction, which generally place their disappearance around 40,000 years ago. Evidence from sites such as the Lapido Child Burial in Portugal, Zafaraya Cave, Gorham's Cave, El Salt, and Cueva Anton in Spain, along with the persistence of Musterian tools, genetic evidence, and the concept of Iberia as a climate refuge, collectively support the notion that Neanderthals may have endured much longer in isolated pockets of southern Iberia. Habitat modeling is an approach used to estimate Neanderthal population size by analyzing their ecological niches, resource availability, and geographic range. This method combines environmental reconstructions with archaeological data to estimate population density and distribution across the landscapes they inhabited. Habitat modeling estimates place the historical Neanderthal population at 30,000 to 100,000 individuals over their last 100,000 years, with regional densities varying significantly. This method emphasizes the influence of environmental factors on their survival and underscores the precarious nature of their existence in fluctuating climates. Estimated population densities for Neanderthals range from 0.1 to 0.5 individuals per square kilometer in optimal environments, for example, the Mediterranean during interglacial periods. However, for less favorable environments, densities could drop below 0.05 individuals per square kilometer. Given their geographic range of approximately 5 million square kilometers during their peak, total populations are estimated at 30,000 to 100,000 individuals. Interglacial periods allowed for expansion into previously inhospitable regions. Neanderthal populations peaked during warm interglacial periods like the Eemian 120,000 years ago, with estimates reaching 80,000 to 100,000 individuals. Population sizes began declining steadily with the onset of glacial conditions and competition with modern humans reducing numbers to less than 10,000 individuals by 40,000 years ago, just before their extinction. High population densities were likely in resource-rich regions like the Mediterranean and areas with high prey density. Sparse populations were found in harsher climates such as the steppes and tundra. During glacial periods, habitat modeling shows a contraction of habitable areas to refugia, for example southern Europe, leading to population bottlenecks. The discovery of the Lapido child in Portugal offers tantalizing evidence for the possibility of late Neanderthal survival and their interaction with modern humans. Found in 1998, the remains of the four-year-old child display a mix of anatomical traits attributed to both Neanderthals and early modern humans. Radiocarbon dating placed the burial at approximately 24,500 years ago, just before the last glacial maximum. This has been interpreted as evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans during their coexistence. While some researchers argue that the skeletal traits fall within the range of variability for modern humans, others suggest it represents a hybrid individual, indicative of prolonged Neanderthal presence in the Iberian Peninsula. The Lapido child's burial suggests a cultural exchange between these groups and reinforces the hypothesis that Neanderthals may have persisted in Iberia longer than in other parts of Europe. Zafariah Cave, located in southern Spain, is another key site contributing to the late survival hypothesis. Discovered in 1979, the cave yielded Neanderthal remains and Musterian tools both unequivocally associated with Neanderthal populations. Radiocarbon dating of charcoal and associated materials suggested occupation as recently as 28,000 to 30,000 years ago, making it one of the latest known Neanderthal sites in Europe.
Archaeologists also have discovered Mousterian stone tools, usually Neanderthal in origin, from 28,500 years ago in the Russian Arctic, which suggests that a population of Neanderthals lived happily in Siberia 12,000 years after their purported extinction. The geographic isolation of Iberia, combined with the shelter provided by mountainous terrain, may have allowed Neanderthals in this region to survive long after their counterparts elsewhere had vanished. Skeptics of these late dates argue that potential contamination of the samples could undermine the conclusions. However, the robust morphology of the skeletal remains and the distinct cultural signatures of Mousterian tools leave little doubt about the site's association with Neanderthals. Gorham's Cave, situated in Gibraltar, provides further evidence of Neanderthal persistence in Iberia. The site has been extensively studied, with Mousterian tools and other artifacts recovered from stratified layers. Some layers have been dated to as recently as 28,000 years ago, suggesting that Neanderthals may have used this cave as a refuge during the final stages of their existence. The coastal location of Gorham's Cave likely provided a stable supply of resources, including marine food, which could have supported small populations of Neanderthals during periods of climatic instability. This reliance on diverse food sources may have been crucial for their survival. Additionally, the isolation of Gibraltar may have reduced competition with modern humans, allowing Neanderthals to persist longer in this area. El Salt, located on the coast of southeastern Spain, is another significant site that has yielded evidence of late Neanderthal occupation. Charcoal samples associated with Mousterian tools from this site have been radiocarbon dated to approximately 44,000 to 34,000 years ago. While this timeline does not extend as far as some of the other sites, it highlights the gradual retreat of Neanderthal populations in response to environmental and competitive pressures. The findings at El Salt underscore the adaptability of Neanderthals, who likely exploited a range of ecological niches, including coastal resources. Cueva Anton, located in the same region as El Salt, provides additional insights into late Neanderthal survival. The site's archaeological layers reveal Mousterian tools and evidence of Neanderthal activity, with dates extending to around 37,000 to 30,000 years ago. This timeline overlaps with the arrival of modern humans in Iberia, raising the possibility of cultural or genetic exchanges between the two groups. The tools found at Cueva Anton demonstrate the technological sophistication of Neanderthals and suggest that they maintained distinct cultural practices even as their populations dwindled. The site's sheltered location and access to resources may have allowed Neanderthals to persist longer than in less hospitable regions. The persistence of Mousterian tools across multiple Iberian sites is a critical piece of evidence for the late survival hypothesis. These tools, characterized by their flake-based technology, are uniquely associated with Neanderthals and reflect a high degree of skill and adaptability. The continued presence of Mousterian tools in Iberia, even as they disappeared from other parts of Europe, suggests that Neanderthals maintained a foothold in this region. The tools also indicate that Neanderthals were capable of adapting to diverse environments, from coastal caves to inland valleys, which may have contributed to their prolonged survival in Iberia. Genetic evidence further supports the hypothesis of late Neanderthal survival and interaction with modern humans in Iberia. DNA analysis has revealed that modern human populations in Iberia have some of the highest levels of Neanderthal ancestry in Europe. Neanderthals may not have gone extinct, but rather have assimilated into the present human population. That is one of the implications of a new study, which found that modern human DNA could have accounted for 2.5% to 3.7% of the Neanderthal genome. This genetic legacy implies significant interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans, which may have occurred during their coexistence in Iberia. The discovery of the Lapido child and other hybrid-like fossils adds weight to this argument. Additionally, the presence of Neanderthal-specific genetic markers in modern populations suggests that Iberia served as a key region for interactions between these groups. The interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans is well documented, 
with non-African populations carrying approximately 1-2% to Neanderthal DNA. However, some researchers propose that these encounters may have been fraught with cultural and biological challenges. Recent studies suggest that mating between the two groups often resulted in low fertility or hybrid offspring that struggled to thrive. One hypothesis is that interbreeding may have been a product of failed alliances rather than widespread integration challenges romanticized notions of harmonious coexistence. Instead, these encounters may have been sporadic and marked by tension, reflecting the complexities of prehistoric interactions. Now, interbreeding may have been a consequence of conflict or dominance rather than mutual cooperation. This perspective sheds light on the broader dynamics of prehistoric coexistence, where alliances and hostilities shaped the fates of both species. One of the most compelling arguments for late Neanderthal survival in Iberia is the region's role as a climate refuge. During the last glaciation, much of Europe was subject to extreme cold and harsh environmental conditions that likely contributed to the decline of Neanderthal populations. Iberia, with its relatively milder climate and diverse habitats, may have provided a sanctuary for Neanderthals. The geographic barriers of the Pyrenees and surrounding mountain ranges further isolated the region, potentially shielding Neanderthals from competition with modern humans. Evidence from sites such as Gorham's Cave and Zafariya Cave highlights the strategic use of natural shelters and resource-rich environments, which would have been critical for survival during this challenging period. A comparison of the Oasi jaw with the Zafariya cave fossils provides intriguing insights into the potential hybrid morphology of late Neanderthals. The Oasi jaw, discovered in Romania, is dated to around 40,000 years ago and exhibits a mix of Neanderthal and modern human traits. This individual's genome revealed significant Neanderthal ancestry, suggesting interbreeding occurred shortly before their lifetime. Similarly, the Neanderthal remains from Zafariya Cave display robust features typical of Neanderthals, but are also associated with a late survival timeline, overlapping with the arrival of modern humans in Iberia. While no direct genetic evidence links the Zafariya individuals to hybrids like the owner of the Oase jaw, the morphological similarities hint at potential genetic and cultural exchanges. The comparison underscores the complexity of human evolution during this period and suggests that hybridization may have been a more widespread phenomenon than previously thought, particularly in regions like Iberia, where both groups coexisted for extended periods. Far from being isolated, Neanderthals were part of a dynamic web of interactions with their environment and other hominin species. Their presence across Europe and parts of Asia demonstrates remarkable adaptability to diverse landscapes, from dense forests to arid steppes. Recent genetic studies reveal that Neanderthals were not a monolithic group, but a diverse population with regional variations. This diversity suggests complex social networks and the ability to adapt to localized challenges. Neanderthals also likely engaged in trade or cultural exchanges with other hominin groups, as evidenced by the spread of tool technologies and genetic admixture. Despite the compelling evidence, the hypothesis of late Neanderthal survival in Iberia is not without controversy. Critics argue that some of the radiocarbon dates from key sites may be unreliable due to contamination or methodological errors. Additionally, the lack of direct evidence for interaction between Neanderthals and modern humans in some sites complicates interpretations. For example, while the Lepido child suggests genetic mixing, other sites show no clear evidence of cultural exchange. These gaps in the archaeological record highlight the need for further research and more advanced dating techniques to clarify the timeline of Neanderthal extinction in Iberia. In conclusion, the hypothesis that Neanderthals survived until the last glaciation in Spain is supported by a combination of archaeological, genetic and environmental evidence. Sites such as the Lepido child burial, Zafariya Cave, Gorham's Cave, El Salt and Cueva Anton provide compelling case studies of late Neanderthal occupation. The persistence of Mousterian tools, coupled with genetic evidence and the unique climatic conditions of Iberia, underscores the possibility that Neanderthals found a refuge in this region during their final days. While debates about dating and interaction continue, the evidence from Iberia paints a picture of a resilient and adaptable population 
that may have defied extinction longer than previously thought. Further research will undoubtedly shed more light on this fascinating chapter of human prehistory, offering deeper insights into the legacy of Neanderthals and their enduring impact on modern humans.